Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Happy Sunday. Now, we're back with some more Mark Tinsley. The defense tries to come in and, you know, discredit our boy, Mr. Tinsley, but he's not having that. Now, get everything you guys need, pull up a chair, grab anybody close by, and let's go straight into this cross-examination of the defense. You testified at length uh, to the state grand jury, basically, this, this similar testimony you're giving here today. Is that correct? Uh, the testimony. Okay, before we even go any further, you guys got to... Is it just me, or does this guy really kind of come off as a douchebag? Like, I know he's trying to be like, uh-huh. You know, that whole image that he's playing, it's not working on him. Like, look at the hand gestures, everything. Kind of annoying. He's going to stay like this the entire interrogation also. I don't think it was financial pressure because I didn't, I mean, I was holding him personally accountable. I was insisting that he pay. Uh, I didn't see how a payment plan on a settlement would put any pressure on Alec. It was um, sort of a deal that he couldn't turn down from where I sat. But you were asking for money. From oh, him. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and the inquiry here today is about money, his money, his finances, correct? I don't think so, but um, it certainly concerns his money. And you're uh, anticipating you're going to go to trial, is that correct? Yes. You're going to go to trial uh, and get a verdict against Alex Murdoch, correct? That was what you thought, that's where this was going? No, I, I mean, I didn't see how any reasonable person wouldn't settle the case, especially Alec. And remember, these guys are lawyers. Now, so he's like, okay, look, your son basically killed this little girl, Miss Mallory Beach. You're obstructing evidence. You know, the family couldn't see her. There's a bunch of things that don't look right. So there's two options. You pay out a settlement. We're all lawyers. You know, this is the easier route. You pay out a settlement and they move on or we take it to trial. And like nobody wants to take it to trial because if they lose, you know, then then, um, you know, Paul would have to deal with the repercussions. So it was pretty much a no-brainer. And in his head, Alex was making the money to afford that. Um, so I, I expected the case to settle. 90% of cases settle. Maybe 99. But if we had to try it, yes, we were going to try it. And if he were unable to offer more money, um, then your expectation on, say, on June 7th, you know, for these murders, your expectation was if he doesn't offer more money, we're going to trial. Any money. Right. It, was, it was no money. It, right. no, no money had been offered. So if he didn't offer more money, you see how he's trying to twist the words? Seems like, oh, so if he didn't offer more money, like, you know, you wanted more, greedy. He didn't offer any money. You know what I mean? Your expectation then was we're going to trial. It, if you offer me no money in a case that I'm pursuing against you, then, then the response is uh, we are going to trial. And, and you were pretty far from trial on June 7th, uh, 2021, were you not? No. You, you believe you were close to taking it to trial? I, I, there was an urgency because John Taylor knew that he had about a year to live. And, and we were going to try that case. Um, my expectation was early fall, late summer. You expected to try the, the, the boat case in the summer of 2020, late summer of 2021? August, September, October, sometime in that time. You felt time. like you were only two or three months away from trial? Hey, he was coming for him, man. Don't play around with Tinsley. Like I said, he, start, he sat down and started suing everybody. Nobody was safe. So if he said he was going to trial, guess what? My boy is going to trial and he's suing everybody. Your grandma too. I think he even said at one point, um, he did a mock trial and he was good to go. Like there was nothing stopping them to go to trial. So you either pay up this money, which would be stupid not to, or go to trial and face the consequences. Either way, Pops was going to get some, you know, the family was going to get some closure. Sure. Even though we had all these pending motions that hadn't even been heard, including what venue to have. I had tried the case two times with a Beaufort jury there we go. during COVID. Um, I was ready to go to trial. At, um, Not playing all day games? On June 7th, you hadn't even uh, yet asserted a negligent entrustment claim against Alex, had you? 
Well, I had with John Tiller. John Tiller knew and had agreed to the amendment. Right. There were a number of things that Alex Council had agreed to, including knowing that there was substantial punitive evidence in the case. And but you, at that time, you hadn't even asserted that claim to the court. That well, wasn't before the court, was it? That was just a conversation with John Tiller. Look at this That's smile. She's like, I got you. See, that was just a conversation, informal. The guy is a clown, bro. I've never seen this guy before. He just randomly got put up against Mr. Tinsley, and guess what? If if, if they're going round for one, round for round, Tinsley's easily winning. Station that mattered, because John Tiller would be the one who would object to the late presentation of the evidence, the late presentation of an expert, and he had agreed to all those things. But he had objected to the financial discovery you asked for. Well, there was an objection posed, correct? But he he did object to that. When that answer was given in. Uh, October, September of 20, it was an objection. And the hearing that was that this that motion to compel the financial detail, the testimony, is that's just one of many motions that needed to be heard. Is that correct? Correct. There, there were many motions that had piled up and needed to be heard. There were several. There were several. Do you remember what they all were? There was a motion to change venue. Um, there was a motion to compel against Parker's. There was, uh, Parker's had one or two motions. Some of the motions got resolved, um, one of which was this motion to assert admiralty. In now, keep in mind, they're trying to make him sound like he was unprepared, right? You know, not prepared, didn't really know his facts. But all these motions, he could still go to trial with those motions pending. Like, he was explaining that if the motions didn't get through or if they, you know, if they got rejected, whatever, whatever, it was just a bonus. He was ready to go to trial with the information and the, you know, the stuff he already had. So all that, all those extra things were just a bonus. But, you know, the defense is going to try to make the jury feel like, oh, he's not credible. He didn't even, he wasn't even ready for trial. And he just, you know, starts suing everybody for no reason. Not the case. It seems like it's quite a bit of discovery you're demanding from Parker's in this motion. Which I would have had the answer to on June 10th. So you didn't Either I was getting it or I wasn't getting it, but it, but it, my, my case wasn't dependent on these things. They may have helped my case. They may have put pressure on uh, Parker's camp like I was trying to put pressure on Ellick, but um, it wasn't, the trial wasn't dependent on these things. And t turning to the motion to compel um, Alex, um, first, do you... So he, he realized he wasn't going anywhere there, so he moved on. You notice that, right? Hands in the pocket, looking down. See, I'm noticing all this body language, man. N not even the lawyers are immune to it. You know, we're all human. Looking down, hands in pockets, L. He just took an L. Now we're moving on. you believe that the, uh, the Judge Hall's... Um, initial request in May to go forward with pending motion hearings um, was telegraphing a ruling on that specific motion, or do you believe that that was uh, him looking at these motions piling up and wanting to get some movement? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I, no, I, I, there's nobody in the courtroom, maybe uh, even including me, that wants the case resolved more than Judge Hall. And... Uh, when uh, when the late Mr. Yeah. Tiller asked um, for... Uh, they always zoom to him with his wannabe red hair. Like, Brody is just down bad, man. Like, he is just... Why did you do it, homie? Like, did you hate her that much? A continuance. Uh, and your son? You don't believe that was any kind of stalling tactic, do you? No. That, that, that was a legitimate health-based concern. And if you read my emails, you would see that that I immediately agreed to it. John Tiller was my friend. That request for that financial information from Parker's that was going to be heard on that June 10th day, just along with all these other motions that had piled up in a case that apparently wasn't moving very well, quickly. Well, I, I, I understand you don't want to acknowledge what I've handed you, but... Um, Sir, I asked you what the ruling was on the motion uh, well, it, it, from Parker's. It was very limited, and as it related to the percent of sales of alcohol that made up his profit, uh, it was premature. The judge ruled, unlike he did in that order I handed you, that it was premature at the time. 
Why was it premature? Well, the difference between Parker's and Ellick is, is that Ellick had and his lawyers had 25 videos of alcohol. They had the punitive damages evidence. You didn't see that with Parker's. It was just a straight up transaction and sale. So to the extent you're suggesting that there wasn't this evidence, there were these mere allegations of negligent parenting, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the you argument. You presented that evidence to the court? I didn't have to present it to the court. That's what you don't understand. John Tiller knew about it. John Tiller is the one who's responding because John Tiller knows ultimately he's going to be in front so of the judge. So you're saying the court, what, granting your motion, though obviously it was saying there might be a hearing on the motion, and maybe at that hearing you would present some evidence in support. But I don't I mean, think that's what it says. I mean, you asked for financial information for Parker's. It was deemed premature because it related to punitive damages, correct? It, it, it was different than the motion that it related to Ellie. Because the law is how much money you have is a factor for punitive damages, correct? Well, you, you're... You're making statements of law. I'm telling you what was happening, and what was happening was is that Ellick's lawyers knew what the evidence was. They knew what the amendment was going to be and the allegations, and he knew ultimately he was going to be back in front of Judge Hall making some ridiculous argument that I hear you're suggesting now. And, again, the gist of this is that there was perhaps going to be this judgment day, I think is a term the state has used, but that was going to be trial, right? That was going to be the verdict. That was going to be judgment day, not this motion hearing where there's a pile of motions that have piled up, and we saw the one that asked for financial information was deemed premature. Not, not at all. You know, what was going on is, is, as I've said a number of times, Danny Henderson was very involved. Danny Henderson was a shareholder. Before I would have gotten the bank account information, before I would have seen the records, Danny Henderson would have seen those records. And I've seen the records. I've seen all the bank statements. Now, it would have been apparent to Danny Henderson, and I believe it would have been apparent to me uh, what Ellick had been doing. So that's the judgment day, is the discovery. And there were a lot of threads that were being pulled, uh, and it was subject to unraveling at any moment. And if those records were disclosed, if Danny Henderson reviewed those records, he would have known there's no way Alex's getting these checks, there's no way these checks are going to forge, there's no way that this money should be transferred. And even if... Wow. So basically when Tinsley started suing Alex, that's when his entire financial webs... Oh, so all these motions that he started sending to see the financial information from Alex Murdoch, right? All this time, they're stalling, they're stalling, they're stalling because everybody knew that if they saw the records, if anybody glanced at the records, they would know that he's, that he's basically stealing money. I think that's the gist of what he's saying. So that's why the, the records were, were stalling, but he was like, well, we could go to trial anyway. Like, if you don't have those to prove anything, we'll still take it to trial. And it'll just be, you know, we'll force you to show it eventually. Pathetically, had this hearing on the 10th, and you got a different ruling um, regarding uh, Alex Murdoch than you got against Parkers, that for some reason it's not premature to him. Isn't it true all you would have been enabled, all you could have gotten would have been a, a net worth statement, financial statement? Not, not even remotely close. Isn't that, that you don't, in your opinion, there's no case law out there saying that's what you get you know, for, that's the measure for punitive damages, net worth. There's no such case, in your opinion, as an attorney. I had seven circuit court orders where the circuit court had ruled that you don't bifurcate discovery, that it wouldn't be proper to have denied the motion, and then what are we going to do? We're going to try the case, and suddenly we're going to stop the trial and go and do the discovery? No. And so I had seven circuit court orders that I handed up to Judge Hall that supported our position. I think that that's what Judge Hall did in his order. Uh, and, and again, you know, the issue is, is not that complicated. It's does he have the ability to pay? Is he broke such that these people sh should uh, accept this pitiful offer if he could cobble it together? But, sir, that's not what you get on a motion to compel, is it? Right. You, you're, you're, you just said ability. Yeah, basically, yeah, he's, he's playing broke. 
And everything pointing back to Alex Murda is that he's making money. Everything. And then when he asks for the financial statements, they don't want to give it to him. Ready to pay so your client can make a decision on whether to accept a settlement offer. But that is not what the motion to compel is about, is it? It's about evidence for trial. The motion That's the compel. legal standard, is it not? No, the motion to compel was about putting pressure on Alec. I didn't really give two cents about whether or not uh, he ultimately had money because I knew he had money. I didn't need those things. The fact that he didn't want me to have them is the reason that I'm pushing it. Exactly. So, I just didn't know why he didn't want me to have them at the time. I do now. So the That's absolutely wild. Mark Tinsley for the win again. That's crazy. Tinsley's the reason he got, he got unraveled. Tinsley might actually be the reason why Alex started going crazy with his financials. Because think about it. You know, you're doing all these shady things in your firm. You know, you're big dog. Nobody's really noticing it. But here comes, oh, here comes Paul crashing the boat. Okay, don't talk to the police, kids. This and that. We're going to try to patch everything up. Mark comes along, wants to sue Alex, right? Simple. Alex, you have money, right? I'm going to sue you. Boom, boom, bam. Your insurance will take care of this and that. Take the settlement. Alex doesn't want to do that for some strange reason. So we go all back around. He wants these statements because that's apparently typically what you would do, you know, his financial statements to see how much he's actually supposed to give the people, you know, according to how much he actually earns and this and that. Right. So me, if I'm making like 30,000 a year, I'm not going to pay them a million dollars. But Alex, if he made 700,000 in a year, he could like, you know, pay them more. That's when his records, the second they wanted to take a look at that, that's when he started to panic because he knew something was wrong in the records. The motion to compel. Stealing ass, bro. Stealing ass piece of shit, bro. And he's making money already. How do you do that? How do you? Was to put pressure on Alex. It wasn't about an expectation the judge was actually going to give you this stuff on, on June 10th. If you're a good plaintiff's lawyer, Everything you do in a case is to put pressure on the other side. Yeah, exactly, bro. Exactly. You're, you're going to try to call me out for just putting in motions? Bro, this is pressure. This is hardball. I'm going to put these motions in. Hey, why don't you want to respond to this? This in particular. Oh, you just don't want to? Pushes even harder. Pushes even harder. Bro, I would not want to be prosecuted by this guy. He ultimately is the reason why Alex got caught for stealing and probably what led into him, you know, bang, bang to his family. For whatever like reason he thought was, for whatever reason he thought was beneficial to him, you know. We don't really know what was going through his head, but I'm sure there was a master plan. You know, there's insurance policies. There's, you know, there's all types of shit that can actually be happening. That's related to money with those two being out of the picture. The outcome of a hearing on June 10th was not that you're going to get to launch a full-scale forensic audit because you had a conversation with someone who said, whose lawyer said, oh, he's, he's broke, and you didn't believe it. Not at that stage of the litigation, sir, is it? That's not what's, what's going to happen, is it? I don't think you need a full-scale forensic audit for something a five-year-old could see. Um, mm. So, no. Something a five-year-old could see. Oh, him. He's rich. He has a big house. He has a lot of cars. Simple, bro. Come on. We're not stupid. You wanted pre-trial ability to pay discovery to inform whether or not to accept a, a compulsive discovery, compelled, so that your client could decide whether or not to take a settlement offer. Yes, exactly. He's trying to make this sound like it's so hard. Yes. Basically, we're trying to check your pockets you you mess this person's life up right let's check your pockets real quick how much you got all right this is how much we're gonna take because you make this much it's only right simple we're not gonna just accept something blindly not knowing how much you're making that's just a shitty lawyer you don't like the answer but i'm telling you i did not care about the answer what i cared about was putting pressure on Alec. i think that your assessment of the law is wrong and I didn't really care whether I got it at the end of the day. I knew he didn't want me to have it. Yep. And so that's what I was doing was putting pressure on him. It would have suited me fine not to have ever gotten anything and to leverage it into a settlement and gone on about my way. But that's not what happened. He got, wow. So 
he was, was the, the reason alex this is why he tried to intimidate him at the gathering bro he was rocking the boat no no more like rocking the ship bro he was fucking everything up for alex alex hates this guy this is like the word this guy is who he probably sees in his nightmares like oh, mark mark shit and then he goes back to sleep realizing it's not a dream you're in jail still because of mark <laughs> was not about obtaining uh information that may have been relevant to the trauma. case no Fuck you. It's not. It was about Emily. getting information to inform whether or not you wanted, your client would take a settlement offer. Yes. What I told Judge Hall was, they say he's broke. My people have lived in Hampton their entire lives. They do not believe he's broke. If he's broke, we need to open the books and let them see it so that they can then form a, a, an informed... Uh, we need to open the books. When Alex heard that... He said, we need to open the books. And Alex was 10 miles away. Like, what? I heard something. Something about ledgers and checks. I don't know. Let's let's continue fishing, Paw Paw. Come on, Paw Paw. Let's go shoot some hogs. Then later on, I'm going to shoot you. Like, bro, Murdoch out here wilding. Opinion about what they should do. It didn't, it didn't have anything to do with, with the trial. It had to do with the case and resolving the case. And, and then I think we briefly touched on Satterfield. Just to be clear, they came to you the first time they came into your office or uh, any was September 21? It's, it's either late August or early September, um, but very early September. And, and since now I'm thinking that since the roadside shooting whatever that ridiculousness was was the fourth it, it could have been august okay. but it was after well after june 7th it was after june 7th what outcome did you expect the same one that we got when it went forward what? the judge hadn't seen well, i mean the, the outcome wouldn't have been the court will schedule a hearing i mean if the hearing had gone forward what outcome do you uh, would you have expected well, you know, now I know that uh, Alec was working on Monday to get the information together. If the objection was sufficient, there's no reason he would be getting the information together on Monday. Uh, so I could have gotten the information. Uh, but since that didn't happen, if we had argued it, I think I would have had the same outcome. Because he didn't... You know, let, let me just make it a little simpler. Would the court have issued an order, right? Some order would have issued on the motion. I, yeah, I, I would expect an order to issue. Break it down. An order would have issued at some point later, and what, if it were granting your motion, what would that order say? I think it would say the same thing as. Well, well sir, that says a motion hearing will be will be scheduled if necessary. It obviously wouldn't say that. So, what would the order granting well, the you, motion say? Look, I, again, it, what it says is is that once Mr. Tiller gets the information from. Alec gives it to me. If necessary, if I deem it insufficient, then we'll have another hearing and we'll argue about it. So, so that's what it's I a voluntary expect. disclosure, and then if you deem that insufficient, we go have a motion to compel here. That's the way motions to compel go every single day. So, if you deemed it insufficient, if if the court actually had to issue an order on your motion, what you would have gotten every you've gotten his. Um, would the law firm books have been open to you? I don't know that I'm asking for the law firm books. I'm asking for Alex. Right. Would you, you have gotten, what, a financial statement? No. The court would have ordered uh, every account detail listed to you, all those personal accounts, just because you asked for it to inform a settlement decision? I was asking for the names of the institutions where he had accounts. I told you that. Right, to that. subpoena. Yeah, see, he was going for specific accounts. and. He even, this lawyer, he goes through all the motions and he he reads each one out very long, like by name, one, two, three, four, like trying to make it seem like it was a lot. But it was, Alec had a lot of accounts in specific areas in the law firm. So basically, he wanted to look at all of those. And honestly, they probably would have granted it because they wouldn't have had any reason not to. It's just financial documents. 
Nothing to see here. This is how much he makes unless there was a problem. Now, they're trying to make it seem like all this stuff wouldn't have even passed and like he was just, you know, trying to apply false pressure to him. But the fact that Alex didn't want to show those statements, he's trying to explain is why he knew he had to go after him. Sure. And, but that's different. And that would have been resisted, me. and there would have been further litigation. This this process would have taken some time, would it, if it was resisted, right? But where are you going with I'm that? I'm not sure. Sure. Like what was resisted? If you got the names of the banks and issued subpoenas, there would be motions to quash the subpoenas. Well, I, you know, you're you're right? speculating as same as you're asking me to speculate. I'm trying to talk to you about what the judge actually did and what was actually in front of the judge. I get you don't want to talk about that, Ooh. but you know. Man, he's crushing them. He's like, let's stop talking about theory. Let's talk about what the judge actually said. And if we focus on what actually happened, you'll see why they were granting all the stuff I was going to ask for. And we can speculate any number of things could have happened. That at some point in the future, you would maybe get a voluntary disclosure. And if you didn't like it, then the motion would be heard, the motion to compel. That, that's, that's what you say it says, right? Well, if we had shown up and they had made the argument that you're advancing here, then maybe in this imaginary world there's things that didn't happen, the judge would have uh, actually ruled on it. We would, have, we would have a ruling on whether or not it was relevant, whether or not I was entitled to it. Um, and you would have been relevant for Alex but not for Parker's? Look, it, there, there are different things that are being asked here. And, and, and to your point, again, because Parker's is just a liquor sales company, right? Or bar, whatever. They made the sale, the end, story's over. But Alex, he's a whole person. He, he has different accounts. He has all this money to a, like that comes from different areas. So it makes sense for him to want to ask from Alex and not from the other place. We're the same. Why didn't the judge sign the same order that you say he would have done? That's not what he did. At the same time we argued the Parker's motion, we argued the motion for Alec. Mm -hmm. And so he came to two different conclusions. They're two separate things. And it's obvious to see that. He's, trying, he's just trying to create confusion. They're two, ob two different things. He makes money from different areas, different accounts. We need to see how much you really make, how much you net. Conclusions on those issues. One is he said it's premature. The other is, is that Mr. Tiller's going to get the information, give it to the plaintiffs, and if it's not sufficient, we'll have another hearing. I don't know how you can be any clearer than that. He had to take a step over to Mr. Harputley, and he's like, hey, bro, um, this guy's really roasting me out here. I don't really know what to do, man. Like, I keep trying to bring up shit about him not passing motions in time, but it's not working. He's like, nah, don't worry, son. If you just say this and that, you can bullshit for about another 15 minutes and confuse everybody in the jury. Yeah, 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 that's a good idea. Yeah, 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 you can say this, and that'll buy us another 15 minutes, possibly. Alec is right there like, yep, sounds good. Sounds good, my lawyers. Y'all got this. I swear, I mean, they really don't have anything. They're trying so hard, and it's, like, sad. They're really doing a good job, in my opinion. Like, they have nothing to work with. All they can do so is throw smoke and mirrors. And maybe, maybe we can agree on this. Um, the hearing had gone forward June 10th. That day would not have been the, some sort of judgment day when everything unravels, correct? There would have been further activity, maybe a voluntary disclosure, an analysis by you whether it's adequate, another hearing if you thought it wasn't, maybe some subpoenas would go out. There was going to be some time after that. Is that fair? They're, they're really trying to push that he wasn't ready for trial and it would have taken a lot longer. You guys really let me know what that's about. What's the difference if it would have taken longer or shorter? Now, sure, one of the people suing didn't have long to live, right? But it was still going to happen. So what's the def like? What's the defense's point in that? What if it did take longer? Who cares? Who gives a shit? 
I think it's fair that to say that there wouldn't have been an explosion on June the 10th, but the fuse was lit the moment that that information became Public. available in the case. Not as much to me, but certainly to Danny Henderson, who would have, like the phone records, like some of the other materials, reviewed it before I got it. And that's and what blew up his spot. That's what blew up Alex's spot because he he sent the request. They had to send it over, and they're like, "Oh, let me." Oh, oh, what's going on here? What Alex is on some bullshit? Would you you see, bro, out here wilding, bro? Alex would have known that. Yeah. I mean, in, in that analogy, isn't aren't you really saying that the fuse was lit and the you were going after his assets and? That fuse is going to go down until trial because you're going to go to trial against him, and that's when the fuse would burn down. I think the fuse was lit when he started stealing money. <laughs> let's just let's just say it right there. Exactly, the fuse was lit a long time ago when he started stealing money. You know what? No, he made the fuse when he started stealing money. The fuse was lit when he started probing for that information. When that information became public and his firm saw it. It was GG for Alex. Everything went downhill. So it wasn't lit on, it wasn't going to be lit on June the 10th. It was certainly getting a lot more oxygen. Right. It's, it was, I love the, it was certainly getting a lot more oxygen. Yo, that's quick thinking. I wouldn't have thought of that one. It was getting some oxygen, bro. That shit was about to go like real soon. Lit way before and it was going to keep burning well after June 10th. Okay, I, I stop with the well analogy. After, but it, it, it wouldn't have been judgment day on June the 10th, but but he would have known it was beginning to unravel. Yep. Not judgment day. No further questions. Yes, sir. That's absolutely crazy. He was the cause, people. He caused it. He was the fuse, the ignition. I didn't know how integral he was, but in the past, he probably didn't even know how much of an integral part he was playing. He was just like, give me your records, bro. Stop being weird. Settle the case. Why would we go to trial? This is stupid. You're a lawyer. You should know this. And then he was like, hold on now. He doesn't want to give me his financial documents for a reason. Hold on now. He knows that if he gives me his financial documents, it has to pass through his boss first. Bro. His gears started turning right around that point. Yeah. Nah. It, I mean, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know. Uh, I appreciate you guys for watching. We will continue with, you know, the Alex Murdoch case. Take it to the end. Until then, people, stay safe, stay inside. Enjoy your Sunday. I love y'all. Have a good day. Peace.